to episode 91, part 2 of Africa's premier sports video podcast, the Three Quarters Podcast. As usual, remember to jump onto the hashtag Road to Japan to support the Kenya Simbas as they are still looking to qualify for the Rugby World Cup in 2019 in Japan. I'm Demi Duffield. And I'm Nara Kamuya. So we had the inaugural um, Baziti League, yeah. which is the first of its kind, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to run hopefully for a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the match day one results are as follows. Yeah. We had Catholic Monks uh, take mm-hmm. on TUK. Mm-hmm. Um, we told you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to say TUK. Would, uh-huh. Yes. So um, that was 44-14 to Catholic Monks. Yeah. Uh, Edgerton Wasps beat um, Technical University of Mombasa. Yeah. Uh, 12-11. Yeah. Mean Machine beat uh, University of Edgerton. Mm-hmm. 20. No. Edgerton or Eldoret? Eldoret. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 27 18. Yes. And Black Blood beat uh, J Crat 23 14. Mm-hmm. So pool standings are as follows. Yeah. In pool A, we've got uh, Black Blood with four points, mm-hmm. Edgerton Wasps with four points, mm-hmm. uh, te- Technical University of Mombasa yeah. with one point, and J Crat with zero. Yeah. Um, then we've got in pool B, uh-huh. uh, Catholic Monks with five. Yeah. Only team having one with a bonus point, yeah. so well done to them. Uh-huh. Uh, mean Machine with four, um, University of Edgerton with zero, yeah. and a TUK with zero. Yeah. So we'll have match day two um, on October the 6th, mm-hmm. and uh, games are as follows. These will be at the Catholic University. Yeah. Uh, so 10 a.m., we've got Catholic Monks versus uh, UOE. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we've got Edgerton Wasps versus j at yeah. 12. Yeah. 2 p.m., we've got Black Blood versus... Uh, t- Technical University of Mombasa, yeah. and at 4 p.m. we've got Me Machine versus TUK. Yeah. What do you think of those games so far? Um, first, like we said, it's a very good initiative that they've started. Um, Agri Chabeda and his team are doing a good thing because, like you're saying, there's always been a void yeah. uh, in terms of university rugby. Uh, say for Black Blood and Mean Machine, who do participate in the Kenya Cup, okay, mm-hmm. Mean Machine had been relegated; they're now back. And Strathmore. And Catholic Monks did well at some they, point. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're more yeah. of Division 2. Yeah. They're more in the championship. Yeah. So, save for the top guys who play the big boys, these other guys only have time to play the big boys during um, sevens. Yeah. They don't, they don't really encounter. So, it's good to have a competition within themselves or a league within themselves where they're able to match up. Uh, you know, they're contemporaries, they're the same age. Mm-hmm. Most of these guys did face up against each other in high school. Mm-hmm. So, it's good to see that void being filled because we are seeing a scenario where. Let's take it back to the Prescott Cup, which has been revamped. And mm-hmm. it's taking the festival format that this Varsity League is taking, right? So you have that, and then now you're doing the Varsity League, which are, they want it to be a festival format. Mm-hmm. They want it to, you know, fun field. That's why all the action is at one place. One venue, yes, one, which makes it easy, obviously. Exactly. So the game start at 10 a.m. and they end at 6, 6 p.m. So um, it's, a very good, it's a very good idea. And uh, it's not shocking to see the results that we've seen in week one. Uh, though I must say, I mean, you, you, you get the feeling that, you know, Catholic monks are not going to be the guys to play, at, to play with this yep. year. They're the only team, like you said, that have registered a bonus point. But again, Mean Machine is there, Black Bird is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the good thing is that all these teams are featuring the big guys, the Mean Machines and the Black Blood. So yep. um, it's, a good, it's a good one. And, and like we're saying, it's Festival Rugby, October 6th, for those guys who have time, head, up, head, head on. Head off, head off <laughs> to, to Catholic University yeah. and um, and see the action that's happening. It's it's good quality university rugby and and it's as passionate. I feel. I mean, the most passionate rugby we have in this country is normally high school. Mm-hmm. So you're still tapping into that raw passion that these boys have, and I, I can only imagine the kind of atmosphere that's there. So if you don't have a plan, don't say we didn't give you a plan. Just yep. head, head, off, head off to Catholic <laughs> University uh, to watch there. Uh, also, what I like about this is that all the teams have shown up and they're showing the seriousness, yeah. um, you know, in this league. Yeah. In the sense that, you know, uh, in former, say, Kenya Cup um, fixtures, yeah. you've seen university teams not show up for fixtures, uh-huh. not traveling. Mm-hmm. But this is more or less centralized. Yeah. And every team actually shows up and yeah. they have, you know, their full house. Yeah. So very well done to them. It, it must mean then, from a logistical standpoint, uh, the guys behind the tournament, mm-hmm. Agri Chabeda and his team, I forget his company, but he's mm-hmm. the one he's, he's in charge. It must mean that they have a bit of money because uh, they're the ones who are supposed to be meeting the logistics. Yeah. And um, it, it, it shows that you know, 
when when used rightly, then money can produce a lot of results. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Um, so we have got um, a change of order mm -hmm. at Kenya Harlequins yeah. and also at Mean Machine. Yeah. So we'll start off with Mean Machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, former winger, mm -hmm. Jacob Siwa, yeah. is the new chairman. Mm -hmm. So they had their AGM yeah. and he won. He beat Steve Obonio by one vote. Yes. Which, uh, I mean, that's really close. Yes. But very well done to him. Steve Obonio was there for, or Brian, Steve, yes. Boss, I, yeah. him. Yes. Yes, he was there for three years. Yeah. And, you know, finally they've got someone else. And I feel, well, you know, very well done to Obonio and what he did yeah. uh, for his team. Yeah. I feel that having someone who's just come from playing, because uh, Siwa has just graduated, mm -hmm. um, he knows what goes on, mm -hmm. you know, as a player. Mm -hmm. He knows how funds, you know, get to somewhere and yeah. they don't, you know, go all the way. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like he'll be a little more, not that, you yeah. know, Steve was not passionate, yeah. but he'll be looking at it from a player standpoint uh -huh. and also from a management standpoint. Uh -huh. uh, but what do you think of you know that change? Ideally, that's how it should be. Yeah. Um, exactly what you've said. Uh, Jacob Seo just finished playing. He's just oh, sorry, just graduated. Yeah. And having featured for the main machine, for for main machine, ideally he should be able to know exactly where the problem was. Exactly. And what he's experienced, what you know problems they went through when mm -hmm. he was playing. But the problem is, and 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 I hope he's listening, is that. Very many of these ex-players get into these management positions and then they keep doing exactly what was being done to them when they were players. Yep. And that can be the most, or that will be the most unfortunate outcome from all this, is that if Jacob Sewer gets into that position and then he starts frustrating machine players just because he was frustrated. Mm -hmm. And it's a very big problem in Kenya rugby. We were not paid in our days, so even as kids are not going to pay. Or even how, um, it might not necessarily be that, but someone gets into a managerial position mm -hmm. and then you see the money and then you get greedy. Yeah. And you completely forget how it was mm -hmm. when you were a player. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that Jacob, you know, remembers how it was yeah. when he was a player. Uh, we, and best of luck to him. You, you only hope that he's gotten into this for the best and he has the best intentions at heart. Because if he doesn't, then it's going to be a cycle. And this is going to be the exact same story we're going to be talking about machine year in, year out. Yep, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. So uh, moving on to Kenya Harlequins. Yeah. So there is an well, there was supposed to be an AGM, yeah. didn't quite go as planned, uh -huh. so there was an SGM. Uh -huh. And um, I'll just read out the names of the people who are in the interim committee. Uh -huh. um, so we've got uh, Rafael Nzomo uh, in as chair, yeah. Herbert Mochiro as vice chair, yeah. uh, Dominic uh, Dimba as yeah. treasurer, yeah. Uh, Mike Mbaya uh -huh. as director accountant. Yeah. Uh, then we've got um, Victor Sudi as director of technical. Yes. Uh, Hamon Sando mm -hmm. as a technical member. Mm -hmm. Stanley Omino as club secretary. Mm -hmm. And Paul Nyamodi as legal advisor. Mm -hmm. Mike Lucas says that he's not going to vie for chair, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you have the next uh, elections, which should be in 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of this? I mean, Mike Lucas' term was up. <laughs> yeah. And uh, frankly speaking, I think, and I'm just speaking, it's my opinion. <laughs> Even if he did contest, I don't think he was going to win. So. Um, he's just decided to take a step back, which is good. Um, we appreciate and thank him for what they've done in the last three years. Uh, that's Mike Lucas, Sydney, Ashioya, Mahinga Oyaki. Ezekiel Awar, of course, was promoted and he became director of uh, director in Kenya Rugby Union. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there's this team that has been appointed, uh, Marine, Ralph Nzomo. Uh, that's he, in his playing days, he was known as Marine. Mm -hmm. He comes in as the interim chair. Uh, what Ralph brings is a, he can steady the ship. Uh, because, I mean, he's been in charge of Polo mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, Career-wise, he's pretty solid. Mm -hmm. uh, he has the proper connections. And so he can be able to stable the ship because that's, Queens has been rocked with a lot of scandals yeah. and a lot of turmoil in the last few years. So Ralph brings that uh, and uh, he's, he'll be able to steady the ship before whatever committee comes in. Uh, you have the likes of Harper Machiri, it's good to see him back in the yeah. fold. Uh, Mike Mbaya, who once served as treasurer for Queens, is back as director of accounts. Uh, Victor Sudi Hamon Sando, who's an old, you know, old guy. Uh, Stanley Omino, who's done a lot of work in the last few uh, years at, at, at Queens. And Paul Nyamodi, who makes a return. I mean, he was chairman at one, one time for mm -hmm. Queens. But Paul Nyamodi comes back as a legal advisor. Um, he's very experienced from a legal standpoint, so it's good for Queens. But uh, my biggest issue is that, uh, and it's it's a cross board management in Kenya, is that you come in and you think managing is just dead. Yo, you're supposed to go look for sponsors. And that's what I hope Ralph can be able to do. Yep. I mean, we need to get to the point where we're thinking about clubs as self-sustaining businesses. And only then, will that's the only time the sport is going to grow. So you hope that Ralph puts a platform, and I speak this passionately because <laughs> I'm, I'm a queen, but you hope Ralph, you hope Ralph puts it 
puts the platform and whoever comes in December 2nd picks it up. Yeah. That, that's all I have to say. So very, you know, the yeah. best of luck to yeah. Ngara and his people <laughs> at Kenya Harlequins. Yeah. But moving on very quickly before we finish, yeah. uh, we have the rugby championship. Mm -hmm. So m week five, yeah. we had South Africa take on Australia yeah. and they won 23-12. Yeah. And in the last game, we had uh, Argentina take on New Zealand mm -hmm. and it was 17-35 in favour of New Zealand. Yeah. What do you have to say about those games? Uh, South Africa, Henry Pollard, uh, excellent performance. And the good thing about Henry Pollard, uh, again, I say this, having been lucky to watch your life, <laughs> is that what I love about Andrew Pollard the most is his off-the-ball movements. Mm -hmm. We always see him on the ball, but his calculation, his vision, his intelligence, his rugby IQ mm -hmm. as a number 10, as a fly-off. And I think he's going to be the key to take South Africa to the next level. He had a very good game. Of course, the black players, uh, Gianti on the wing, uh, trying the first minute or so. Mm -hmm. uh, Sia Colisi, who's captain in the spring box, uh, I think second to David Pocock. He's the next breakdown monster we have yeah. um, um, in world rugby. So uh, that was for the South Africa versus Australia. Australia, they need to stop experimenting with Cartley Bill at number 10. Uh, it's big, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, you, have, you have a lot of talent. Uh, Argentina versus New Zealand. I think everyone expected New Zealand was going to win. Uh, New Zealand now have wrapped up the Investor uh, Rugby Championship. Yep. Uh, sixth one, by the way. Uh, so congratulations to New Zealand. Uh, just showing that, look, hey, they're a class above the rest. But look, we saw what happened in Wellington two weeks ago with South Africa beating uh, New Zealand. Uh, so it sets up, I think, a decent game next, mm -hmm. year in, next week in Pretoria mm -hmm. between South Africa and New Zealand. All right. Yeah. Uh, so that's all we have time for. Mm -hmm. uh, but guys should definitely go and watch the Varsity Games. Yeah. Next one will be at Catholic Uni. Mm -hmm. We gave you all the details before. Also follow us on social media. That is by following us on Instagram, liking our page on Facebook, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'm Tamima Duffield. And I'm Nara Kamuya. See you in part three.